What's going on guys? We're going to be looking at Benji Fishy's gameplay, analyzing his decisions, and seeing exactly how he's been rolling so hard in recent events. You know, Benji has been absolutely destroying the competition for this season, and you know, he and his squad commanded the Chapter 2 FNCS Finals, closing out the tourney with a remarkable second place finish. And it seemed like every single week, man, this guy has placed at least top 5 in the solo cash cups. If not top 5, then close to it. You might be like, oh my goodness, another Benji analysis. But listen, we're only doing this again because he's literally one of the most consistent performers out there. You know, we think he's the best player of the season, but what do you guys think? Let us know which pro player you guys feel has done the best so far in Chapter 2. And before we get started, you already know this, over at ProGuides.com, we've got courses by top professionals, including Benji Fishy himself. So go over and get all you need to know and get better at Fortnite. And if you're looking for something a bit more personalized, you can always request a live one-on-one -on -one coaching session available 24 seven. So drop a like on the video, sub to the channel and visit ProGuys.com to get started. What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm back to inspire you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. But the thing is, the motivation that you get from me, I want you to spread to other people. I want you to take this out and be love to other people. You know what I mean? I want you guys to be leaders. I want you guys to influence others because it's time to change this world one person at a time. So just stop thinking about yourself. Why don't you just start thinking about others as well? And I promise you, it's gonna change your life completely. Connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back relax and get my favorite candy come on say it with me it's that bunch of crunch and let's get this going now most of us hate finding snipers right at the start of the match right but i think these first couple of clips are going to convince you guys just how useful they can be you know we've noticed how any time benji gets a sniper in the first building he loots he quickly goes and looks for another pick you know, it makes a lot of sense. No one really expects to get sniped at the first house that you've landed at. Plus, you know, players are usually still at 100 health. So all you need is a body shot for the insta kill. You know, but the thing is, you know, you need to know where the enemy is, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna waste that precious looting time just looking for them. So keen awareness of enemy landing locations is a must. You know, look around when you're landing, right? And just try to create some sort of visual image in your head of the loot path they might take. All right, so let's just go over this example here. All right. Benji saw his opponent land at the house next to him. So once he gets that sniper, he goes hunting. Notice how the roof is missing a giant piece. <laughs> Benji sees it, so he knows the enemy started their loot path at the attic chest, which means they probably worked their way downward. That's the clue, guys, that Benji uses to scope in on the first floor, and he ends up being 100% correct. So getting past the early game is often the toughest part of a match. Many of you guys hit me up on my Insta asking, how do I get out of the early game? So, you know, being able to win your landing spot with a surprise snipe like Benji did right here is a play that more of us need to start attempting. Okay, so just make sure you pay close attention to exactly where players land, all right? That's a big part of whether or not you can even go for the snipe. Otherwise, you're gonna set yourself too far behind while trying to find players to shoot. Okay, so continuing from the last clip, here's a fight that shows the importance, guys, of structure control. Plus, Benji nearly gets outplayed. Yeah, I know, huh? You'll have to see it to believe it. So Benji starts things off with a beautiful opening snipe. Sadly, this time, his opponent survives. Okay, so notice how Benji hip fires his rifle while closing the distance. That's so he can prevent them from healing up freely. You know, that type of pressure is essential when you're closing the gap. This dude isn't having any of it though. <laughs> he immediately ramps up and Benji follows to deny him height. He blocks him off with cones at every turn. It's pretty nuts. Okay, so try to count how many times. I think it was like four different cones, each one causing his opponent to pivot. Time and time again, structure control proves to be the most outmost importance during build battles. Even right here, and I mean right here, when Benji thinks he has him trapped, he edits through to put a wall in the back. A little too slow in this case, so he misses the chance while his opponent drops down low. Okay, so one thing we've noticed with Benji is that, you know, when he wants to take a wall as quickly as possible, he doesn't bother placing a ramp or a cone at his feet. You know, if the wall is within two hits of health, you can hit it once while dropping down and follow up with another swing to finish it off. Most players won't even realize what's going on in time. It works here, look at this. Benji nabs the wall, immediately he edits it and places a cone for more control. Since he has a pump and no follow-up weapon, he closes the wall after every shot, just to minimize any sort of return damage. Very smart. Okay, so here's the outplay I mentioned at the start. 
Benji's opponent fakes an edit to the right, but cleverly closes it and edits out to the left. That fake edit confused Benji to the point where he pulled out his pickaxe, never expecting the second edit. But with an insanely clutch shot right here, our man picks up the kill. That was a close one. Whew. So what won Benji the fight, and how did his opponent almost outplay him? Okay, so after the snipe landed, the hip fire shooting while moving forward definitely stopped some heals from going off. Every bit of health matters, my friends. Every bit of health matters. You know, if it wasn't for the cones that blocked his enemy's high ground take, you know, the fast wall replacing or putting a cone inside their box, this fight might have potentially gone the other way. Yet, you know, if his opponent placed his own cones while pushing for height, Benji wouldn't have had the option. You know, owning structures, guys, is crucial if you want to control the flow of the engagement. Finally, we've got to give credit where it's due. So the opponent's very slick fake out almost got Benji killed. Edit jukes, man, are always useful. And as you can see right here, they can even work against the best. Now, let's take a peek at a high point in game, all right? Arguably the most impactful part of a match, Benji here displays strong fundamental skills and even a neat tunneling trick that helps him easily pick up the win. So right off the bat, here's the fundamental skill number one. It is quick rotations. Probably one of the biggest mistakes most players make during the end game is rotating too late. Oof. Notice throughout the end game footage how Benji tries to always keep himself close to the next safe zone. Positioning that way keeps you safe from harm while also giving you ample time to look for a lens. At this point with the storm coming and no one near Benji for him to kill, he makes his move. By shifting up a layer while rotating here, he's working towards securing high ground later on. Okay, so high ground, guys, is the position you want to be in, especially if you can take it between the second and last moving zones. So it is so vital that you prepare accordingly by positioning high up enough and waiting for the opportunity. That's the second fundamental skill needed to win in games, taking high ground. And here's the fundamental number three, efficient tunneling. Taking and holding high ground requires a substantial investment of materials. I mean, you need mass just to survive the end game in general. And an excellent way to conserve materials is by using efficient tunnels. Okay, so here Benji uses the diagonal floor ramp tunnel, where you place floors ahead and you look down to put stairs behind you. This low cost method covers above you and a bit to the sides, making for a fantastic way to tunnel in cheaply, snazzy. Okay, that's my new word, by the way. Then Benji uses the straight ramp tunnel where he puts a floor in front of him. He looks to the left for a wall, then places a ramp to finish it off. This one, guys, covers nearly every angle your opponents are gonna have for only 30 mass per section. This one, you gotta learn. And look right over here at this amazing trick that you could do with this ramp tunnel. Okay, so if you edit the stairs, you can see right through them. Benji uses this technique to scout the high ground opposition. He notices this dude is exposed, looking the wrong way. Oh my goodness, big mistake, buddy. So Benji goes for some shots and he lasers the heck out of this guy. Now that high ground is weakened, right? He can contest them with more confidence. So Benji builds up, rather than just wasting mats by cranking to the sky, he uses his rifle to knock the enemy down instead. So the guy connects, but Benji sends him falling with a quick couple of edits. Which brings us to end game fundamental number four, my friends, kills to refresh materials. With all the tunneling and high ground tarping, man, Benji's starting to run dry on materials, right? Since he knows the player he lays it is low, this is a perfect target to box fight for a match refresh. So there are a few mistakes here that slow Benji down. But, you know, once he sees the wall close underneath him, it sort of gives away his opponent's next move. It's not like he's going to go out of the storm or anything like that. So Benji rotates the ramp and he lands a juicy pump for a clean kill. Okay, so at this point, Benji tarps forward with floors and cones to hold the high ground, only stopping to either A, go for a lens, or B, heal up. You know, it's pretty straightforward gameplay, but Benji executes it all masterfully. Okay, so jumping ahead a little bit, Benji's starting to run low on mats again, so he goes right back to kill mode. He needs an LM right here, or he gives up his high ground and potentially the win as well. Suddenly, someone comes in from the storm in an attempt to take height. Benji can't build a contest this, so he lays in as much rifle pressure as possible. Okay, so look at this cone here. It's Benji's absolute last build, but he puts it down anyway to prevent his opponent from placing their own stairs. 
The last thing Benji wants is his opponent landing on stairs and holding hype for the rest of the game. Smart decision, my friends. Bravo, bravo, if you ask me. His opponent doesn't fall on that cone, but fortunately still lands another. So all Benji needs to do is W key four to sweep this player right up. Okay, guys, so it's now a 1v1v1. Usually, you know, the one that gets all gung-ho in these situations ends up dying one way or another. So it's beneficial to play it slow in these scenarios. Okay, so let the others duke it out and just wait for the right moment to strike. All right, guys, so now down to only one player remaining. Benji goes straight into box fighting mode. All he has to do is prevent them from healing by applying pressure. Once he has the guy cornered, he takes the cone, he edits it open, and he hits a nasty 200 pump to close out the match. Snazzy. There was a lot to take in with this endgame, so let's go over the fundamentals that won him this match. First and foremost, first quick rotations, man. Ooh. In nearly every single case, you know, it's better to play close to the next safe zone than far back near the storm. Not only to prevent you from getting held, but also so you can pick up some kills. Second, preparing for and taking height. You know, for solos, you usually take height between the second and last moving zones. Just make sure, guys, you have a plentiful amount of mats and that you're up far enough to crank for height when you need to. Third, efficient tunneling. Benji would have ran out of mats much sooner if he didn't utilize efficient tunnel methods. You know, the two he showed us are so easy to learn. If you aren't using them already, you're putting yourself at a severe disadvantage. Darn, that is my favorite word, by the way. And the last one, finding kills to refresh materials. Man, anytime pro players start to run out of mats during the end game, they try to force box fights to find the limbs, right? Materials are the lifeblood of the end game, my friends. You need them to survive, so you must look for kills anytime you run low. Okay, guys, so, you know, that was a brief look at how Benji Fishy's been dominating the Fortnite scene lately, man. You know, it may not seem like much, but honestly, top-tier Battle Royale gameplay isn't always about crazy new techniques or w king everyone you see, right? You know, a lot of it is relatively standard gameplay that's just executed to perfection. Hopefully, by watching how Benji does it, you picked up on a few things that'll help you earn your next dub. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm rooting for you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video, be leaders, you know, inspire others, motivate people all around you. Have that confidence, have that positivity, and we're gonna change this world one person at a time. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta at your motivation guy. Thanks for watching, and if you learned something from the video, remember to drop us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to comment on which pro player you think has done the best so far this season, and use code PROGUIDES in the item shop to further support the team. We'll see you next time.